Joining us now is a certified personal trainer, a specialist in fitness nutrition, an expert in uh, sports nutrition, and youth fitness trainer as well. And then we're going to get into that because schools are cutting PE class. Now, some folks without uh, much athletic prowess often lament, oh, PE class. and that, But it is important, physical fitness, especially to the youth of America, and so Greg McCoy is on with us right now. Greg, you probably, I'm catching you right mid chin up right now, aren't you? Yeah, I just finished the set, Mike. I'll, I'll take a break to talk to you, though. Good morning. You're doing one handed push ups while you're, the other, the phone is in the other hand. Uh, I got it. So, Greg, all right, let's get into this because I think this has been happening for a few years. Uh, schools cutting back on, you know, budgets are stretched. Uh, but I, those of us a certain age, we all have a PE teacher who is uh, maybe revered. Mr. Shimp was ours. This is a guy who showed up every day, even in the winter, in a pair of sneakers, gym socks, gym shorts, and this sweatshirt with a whistle around his neck. The typical thing you would see uh, that's going away, I guess, huh? Yeah, the, the PE class is unfortunately on the decline, um, probably not our wisest decision as a society, and we can kind of talk about why. But yeah, you know, uh, your, your generation certainly has, um, you know, the prototypical PE coach um, in mind. And that's one of the things that's actually changing is, um, you know, as a result of budget restrictions, we're using less and less dedicated physical education teachers we're trying to save costs and put a teacher in their off period to look over PE. Um, so that's, that's just one. And you can understand the trickle-down effects of, um, you know, someone trained to take a child from A to B physically and someone trained to take them from A to B in history. Um, you couldn't swap the PE teacher into history very well. I think we've seen that. Um, many of us had those experiences when our coaches took over our PE class or our history <laughs> class. Um, and you can't swap them the other way either. Um, so that that actually brings up one of the points that, that we're running into as these budget cuts happen. Okay. And it is important, uh, a PE class and, and, and physical fitness in the youth, pretty much a no-brainer. But, to, you know, the points behind why is it important to do it in school maybe and during the school day? Yeah, it's a, it's a big discussion, right? So childhood obesity is um, at an all-time high. It's trending in the absolute wrong direction. Our children are um, becoming more and more, more obese. This is the first generation that is predicted to live less long than their parents. Um, so inactivity and um, everything that comes along with that and all of the health concerns that are related directly to being overweight or being obese um, is shortening our lifespan. Um, and so we've got to get, we, we have to decide, okay, who's responsible for this? And um, certainly there's a responsibility at home. There's a responsibility of the child themselves, although that and, and a young child is going to be pretty small. They don't, they're relying on us, right? And then, so yeah. where do they spend a good amount of their day? Um, they're, they're in schools. And so the, the schools have to take some level of responsibility for keeping these kids active. Um, and not only that, um, there's so much benefit that's been proven um, on how a child performs uh, academically, mentally, emotionally, when they're physically fit or physically active throughout the day, that, you know, the, the end of the day, you're going to actually save time by taking time, um, if you understand what I mean. And that's true for adults yeah. as well as in schools, but, but certainly in schools. We, we, and I only come to all these stories we do here on your morning wake up. I have to come at them from a, a personal standpoint because that's how I understand things. And we homeschooled the last four we have. We have six. So our, our last four were all homeschooled. My wife stayed at home. She was, and then I came home from the studio and I would be like the principal. I do the, the, like the experiments and stuff. But our experience was this. Every day, predictably, you could tell when things would start to slow down. They would get a little foggier. And we had great nutrition. We did exercises mm. in the morning. We had PE uh, as uh, as part of our homeschooling regimen. But you could see them get foggier. You could see them slow down. You could see them start to drift and start to uh, not concentrate. And that's when my wife would say, okay, everybody, put the, everything books away. Let's run some laps around the house. And she would literally, we'd do 
recess for an hour, and they'd come back sharp, man. So what is that? Is it a blood flow thing or what? No, it's it's um, it's activity in the brain. Um, so, yes, certainly blood flow is going to help. You're going to get up. You're going to get moving. Um, that's going to give you a release of endorphins that's going to energize you. But some of the most fascinating research that's come out in the last 20 years is about exercises' effects on the brain. So much to so that neuroscientists will tell you that even if it didn't affect your body, it had no positive effect on your body, which we know it has a lot. But if it didn't, um, it would still be so worthwhile because of what it does to your brain. Exercise, um, and there's one of the best books you can read on this subject we're talking about today is um, called Spark by Dr. John Rattay. Um, and he, he calls exercise miracle growth for the brain, that it actually is going to grow brain cells. And so if you pair that correctly um, with learning, especially where kids might be struggling, one, with if it's because of focus um, or mm -hmm. two, just because it's a hard subject, their brains will be more active, just like your wife intuitively did. Okay, they're starting to get foggy. Let's get them moving. Um, there's so much science on how that can be done um, really, really well and, and evidence that it works. Um, so the information is there. Um, now it's time to, to start to use it on a, a, a bigger scale. All right. About 60 seconds left, Greg. Give us some stuff hey. on your website. What the heck is Hidden Gym? How do I find your gym if it's hidden? I don't understand. That, yeah, that's the big question, right? Yeah, uh, we're Hidden Gym. We've got several locations in the Dallas area. Um, you can train with us if you live in the Dallas area. Probably not a lot I of your listeners. Get there. But we, yeah, we do <laughs> offer remote coaching for any of you guys that want to um, – you know, we, we mainly work with adults. Uh, this is a passion project of ours. One of our core values at Hidden Gym is, is education and philanthropy. So um, we like to give back and um, helping kids with, with fitness is one of those areas that we like to give back in. So hiddengym.net, you can find us on any social media. Thank you guys for listening. And um, it, it's important. Uh, this is something that's going to affect all of us in the terms of healthcare costs and, um, and longevity of our children. So it's something that should be talked about more often. So I applaud you for covering the subject. Excellent. Greg, you're now my personal trainer. I don't know if you knew that. Greg McCoy. HiddenGym.net. <laughs> Let's go get some chin-ups in here this morning on uh, your morning wake-up, 1320 WILS. Greg, have a great weekend, buddy. Thank you, Mike. All right. Your morning wake-up, 1320 WILS.